So if you're a subscriber to my channel, you know I've been experimenting with LoRa WAN radios on the Things Network here in Tucson, Arizona. In response, many of you have commented on Helium with questions and suggestions for future content. In this chapter, I'll go over my experience purchasing an open box Helium gateway from a local vendor, setting it up to work on my network, and conclude by summarizing my first month's results. The goal here is to provide a summary of my experience from the point of view of someone who's never played with the Helium network, or in my case, a SynchroBit gateway. Let's start with purchasing. As many of you already know, the supply for these gateways is fairly limited, requiring a significant payment for hardware that might take months to arrive. I've been told by friends in the Helium community that the issue has to do with chip shortages, but I find this a little difficult to believe. The reason for my skepticism is that LoRaWAN gateways can be built with readily available Raspberry Pis and LoRa radio hats available online for immediate shipping. In prior videos, I've demonstrated building such a gateway for the Things Network. However, for my gateway to work on the Helium Network, it has to be blessed by Helium. Having said that, it is what it is, so if I want to participate in the Helium project, I either have to put myself on a waiting list for a formal Helium gateway purchase or pay a premium to purchase one on eBay. Given these constraints, I wasn't too excited to plug into Helium. And then about six weeks ago, I received a text from a subscriber regarding a couple of SynchroBit Helium hotspots he was offering for sale. I was intrigued, but I decided to do a little bit more research before making such a purchase. I first checked for the presence of any other hotspots near my location. I could do this using the Helium Explorer website that shows the number of gateways installed in a given hexagon hosting an address. I discovered that in my immediate vicinity, there were no other hotspots aside from the one I was planning on installing. This is positive since Helium earnings are weighted more heavily towards gateways installed in lower density hexagonal areas, whereas gateways installed in areas already hosting a significant number of witnesses may have their earnings diminished. Of course, this makes sense since Helium is trying to encourage geographic growth of the network rather than high density installations that serve smaller areas. Since my location looked promising, I reached out to a friend who's well-versed in Helium. I asked him about SynchroBits, and his response left me somewhat cautious about this particular hardware, with his recommendation being that I investigate other makes. I trust his judgment, but I didn't want to wait months to receive a hotspot formally through an authorized vendor in exchange for a couple hundred dollars saved. So I asked my friend to shed further light on the SynchroBit gateway being offered locally. He noted that comments posted in the Helium Discord suggest SynchroBits were having syncing issues with the blockchain, in addition to customer support challenges. In fairness, he also noted that the percentage of offline devices associated with SynchroBit isn't that much higher relative to other brands, such that maybe SynchroBit syncing issues may have been fixed. I checked the website he shared, and sure enough, SynchroBits have about the same percentage of offline devices relative to other makes he recommended. Given that the second-hand vendor offered to refund my money if things didn't work out, I decided to take the leap. And that leads me to the setup, where things got really interesting. The next few slides will be of greatest interest to someone who's brand new to the Helium network and may be under the impression that uh, purchasing a gateway just requires a plug-and-play approach. Uh, this certainly wasn't the case for me personally, as I'll explain next. For those of you who may not be interested in my setup headaches, Please note that things finally did work out such that you just may want to advance to initial results. In my case, the hardware I purchased came with no instructions. However, the individual who sold me the gateway indicated that setting it up is a relatively easy process. He explained that it just requires downloading the Helium app on my phone, plugging in the SynchroBit, and pairing the app with the hotspot. In fact, he was right. I had no trouble doing this at all. The app paired with the gateway and I received account details on my phone. No problems whatsoever. However, the gateway's LEDs used to communicate its state started flashing red, suggesting an error condition and or no internet. For this reason, I naturally assumed something was wrong with my setup. And so I reached out to customer support, sharing details of the problem I was having. And this was their response, a suite of questions that I guess are supposed to point me in the right direction. 
At this point, I quickly realized that this, in fact, wasn't going to be a simple plug-and-play operation. In response, I started things off by following up on the recommendation that I enable port forwarding on the static IP address associated with my gateway to work specifically with port 44158. This involved me logging into my router administrator console via a web browser, typically accessed via this URL, and then finding the network address for my gateway. Then, under Advanced Options, I set up port forwarding so that the IP address of my gateway is mapped to external port 44158. Now, for someone who isn't a network engineer, this took me a little bit of time to figure out via reference to online troubleshooting guides. Note that your own router may require a different approach for this mapping. Next, I looked up the internet IP address of my network and then use this website to scan my network to confirm that the required port was in fact open as recommended by Synchrobit. Unfortunately, this didn't fix the red indicator light I was witnessing. In response, I sent all the details of what I'd done back to Synchrobit, indicating the recommendation hadn't worked out. Their tech support then asked that I open the hardware to investigate whether the unit had an SD card, which may be corrupt. If it did, they recommended that I needed to purchase a new SD card flash it with the latest firmware, and reinstall. This was definitely not going to be a plug-and-play operation. I followed their recommendations by checking the box and confirming that, in fact, there was no SD card. I also tried setting up the gateway to work over Ethernet rather than Wi-Fi, making sure to remap the port forwarding step to the appropriate IP address associated with that Ethernet port. Unfortunately, none of this worked, and by now I'd invested over 10 solid hours trying to get this gateway working, and I was pretty burned out. I reached out to the vendor who sold me the box. He was empathetic and did offer me a refund, but suggested I try one last thing, specifically to just leave it alone for a day before throwing in the towel. I followed his advice, and after a few hours, the Synchrobit eventually settled on a nice steady green light, suggesting the gateway was asserted and working. This was such a simple remedy, and frankly, I was a little surprised I didn't get this guidance from Synchrobit's tech support, but in the end, everything worked out. I confirmed my gateway status was good by using the diagnostic report available in the Helium app on my phone and two days later confirmed the gateway was in fact earning Helium tokens. A few days later, Synchrobit did get back to me, suggesting there was a sync bug. This echoes what my friend suggested regarding Synchrobit's having blockchain syncing issues, but in fairness to Synchrobit, I think the issue had more to do with my not letting the gateway install firmware updates properly upon its initial power up. I came to this conclusion when, while preparing these slides, I discovered this online setup page for the Synchrobit. Specifically, I failed to first hook up the gateway via an Ethernet cable to assist with a firmware update, and second, I failed to let the gateway sit for at least one hour prior to pairing it with the Helium app on my phone. In retrospect, I think the vendor's advice to just leave it alone allowed the gateway to do all its firmware updates and eventually sync with the blockchain. Anyway, I've included a link to the setup documentation in the description of this video in the event others have received a sinker bit with no documentation, as was the case for my own purchase. All right, folks, and I'm uh, checking out the little homebrew antenna, and it's been up there for about a year now, and it looks like it's holding up pretty well. So no need for me to, uh, to investigate that further. But I will eventually replace that with a 5.8 dBi. I just want to see how this one performs relative to a, to a commercial alternative. All right, folks, and that's where my old LoRa node was located. Let's take a look at um, what the visoire on the antenna is. It's been installed there for a while. So let's see if anything has changed. Um, so you can see through the glass there that, um, or through the plastic, that at a frequency of uh, 905.5 megahertz, the Vizoir is 1.535. And that's on the little homebrew antenna. I don't know what the DBI is on that antenna. It's a ground plane antenna. Uh, but the Vizoir is good for the selected frequency. So we'll see how it performs. So one thing I discovered just now is that in order for, uh, for me to be able to hook this up to my LMR 400, I'm going to have to change this connector type to that connector type. 
uh, because I've got a male prong on both uh, what's coming out of the uh, synchro bit and what's coming out of my cable on the LMR400, so this should fix it. And there's the uh, synchro bit um, inside its enclosure on a somewhat shady side of the house, which should, uh, at least during the mornings, uh, the evenings can get a little hot on this house, but that's why I have this under an awning. This is where the old Laura node was. I disconnected it over the summer because I was worried about lightning strikes. And uh, I still have to figure that out, but uh, we're in the middle of winter right now, so things are pretty cool. I don't have too much to worry about in terms of uh, uh, lightning, but I'm gonna have to uh, do a few things to kind of make this setup work a little bit better. I wanna build a larger enclosure. I wanna put a fan on that thing so that uh, it stays cool in the summertime. I wanna put this uh, wire and wrap around conduit, which uh, I used when I worked for the state of Arizona. Great stuff for outdoor applications and just kind of make this a little bit more professional. But for now, it should work. Again, this screen in the Helium app summarized earnings after being online for two days with my gateway and antenna indoors. After placing it outdoors tied to an antenna with good line of sight, I expect the earnings to rise significantly. So once installed, I decided to leave it alone and check in on things after about a month. While waiting, I did receive this notice about nine days after my initial setup, indicating my gateway hadn't synced with the blockchain for at least eight hours. This was a little annoying since I was out of town and couldn't check in on the gateway to see what was going on. Given this notice, I checked in on my earnings, which did increase significantly since moving the gateway outdoors, but which were subsequently impacted by the blockchain syncing issues. Again, I consulted with the individual who sold me the gateway, and he basically told me that this is normal and not to worry about it. So again, I left things alone and things eventually did come back online without me having to do anything. It's interesting that this seems to be a recurring theme with these gateways. When things are a little weird, just give it some time to work out whatever bugs or firmware updates it might be addressing, and things will eventually work themselves out. And here's the performance of my gateway over its first 30 days online. At the current price of Helium, I've earned about $200 over the course of one month. So if I don't tweak my antenna or change anything else, the gateway should pay for itself in about three more months. Now, my motivation for plugging into Helium wasn't to earn crypto, so was all this trouble worth it? I might have said no given all the issues I had setting up this gateway, but now that things are working, this opens up some really interesting venues outside of earning Helium tokens. Specifically, I'm now plugged into this Helium ecosystem that allows me to test the range of homebrew and commercial antennas much better than my old approach of strapping a TTN node to my bicycle and riding around town to see how well it communicates with the LoRaWAN gateway at a fixed position. Instead, I can now take advantage of existing Helium gateways as witnesses to experiment with range performance when swapping out antennas or playing with line of sight. For someone who's curious about LoRaWAN range, this is really powerful and something I'm sure I'll explore in future videos. For the time being, here's a quick snapshot of witnesses and ranges for my gateway. I won't go through the full list of 110 witnesses associated with my gateway. Suffice it to say, I'm witnessing radios as far as 40 kilometers away. I am curious about this one gateway that was pinged over 3,700 kilometers away on the other side of the continent. I know I have a good line of sight with my homebrew antenna, but that distance is just unbelievable. If you have any ideas as to how that could have happened, please let me know in the comments section of this video. So as you can tell, I'm pretty brand new to all this, but uh, I do think that this is uh, rather fascinating in terms of uh, having a network I can tap into to run experiments on antennas and line of sight. If you're interested in this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. Thanks.